Let us bless each other. Be at peace. You are the missionaries to save the world. Let us see the work of the Jehovah God. Let the Lord will become our captain throughout the week. And I bless you in the name of the Lord that this blessing will be upon all of you. If there is someone in the New Testament that received the most answers were, was Apostle Paul. But this Paul, when he spoke of the walk of faith, in one word, it was fighting the spiritual battle. That's what the walk of faith is all about. After he was called by uh, Christ, the field that he was led to was Acts 13, 16, and 19, where unhealthy mysticism and idol worship was in. And you can say this is Paul's last confession of faith. If you see in 2 Timothy 4, 7, he said, I have fought the good, good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. He spoke of how his life was fighting in the spiritual battle. And the Lord, the righteousness judge will award to me. Where we live is a battlefield. If we cannot fight the spiritual battle, as we walk the walk of faith, inside of our family and prosperities and inside of our society, problems have no choice but to come. Even though we were successful inside of the field, if you do not know the mystery of the spiritual battle, then later on, we have no choice but to crumble. That is why after the incident of Genesis 3, we are able to enjoy the blessings and the answers that God is giving us only through the spiritual battle. We have received salvation through Christ that we have received salvation, it means that God is the one who's taking care of our lives. Uh, how can we enjoy that answer of God leading us for eternity? And that is the spiritual blessings. So if we cannot fight the spiritual battle, then we have no choice but to lose hold of all of the blessings that we have received. So last week, in the introduction, we said what we see is temporarily and what is eternal is what is unseen. So try remembering the last week's pulpit. We must get rid of what is not the gospel. This is what we must fight the spiritual battle on. Because these things will drag us down. Why must we get rid of what is not the gospel? No matter how good it is, at the crucial moment, that will drag us down. Because in that background, 
the spiritual reality, Satan, is there. That is why we must get rid of what is not the gospel. There is a hidden b a r t i s a n that is inside of us. There is something that is imprinted, rooted, and become a nature to us. Is the b a r t i s a n of the world. Is the lifestyle of the unbeliever, and this is what the unbelievers have. But this is also inside of us. So that is why we must get rid of this. That is why, no matter how good things that we possess, and many things of the world that we possess, because of those things, it will drag us down. This hidden partisan, it is the partisan of Satan and the world. What this is, it is the, in, the situations that we have. I have situations that are different from yours. And you guys have a different situation than any other people. That is why we cannot say oh, that the situation is wrong or that is correct. Because all of our situations are different. It's just the situations are different. We cannot put a standard on if that is right or in, incorrect. If that situation was given from God, then what would you do? Even though you're in a bad situation, if that is the situation that God has allowed, then what would you do? You can see Joseph, he held on to the covenant of world evangelization. But the situation that he was faced with, he was hated against by his brothers, and he was sold off as a slave. And now he was sent to prison, and that was the situation that Joseph was in. But is that incorrect? Is that wrong? It was allowed by God to send Joseph to Egypt. Joseph knew that situation was allowed by God, That is why he was able to not resent in that situation. He held on to the plan of God and he had success. But many other people, they're inside of that situation that they're given. They cannot break free from that situation. They're just staying inside of that situation. So no, whatever... the situations that you're faced with, know that that is the plan of God and don't remain inside of that situation, but overcome that situation. And I bless you in the name of the Lord that you are able to do that. And many problems come through relationship problems. And through many meetings that you have, with other people, because of that relationship, many people receive scars and they're hurt by the words. So, even though they attend church, many people are faced with conflicts. They have this thought that I'm correct and other people are wrong. That is why conflicts come to us. But if that conflict continues, then that becomes a problem to us. And later on, will come to us as a crisis. Yes, we can have different opinions. But do you know how Satan attacks us? He, make, he makes us think to ourselves that you're correct and I'm, I'm wrong and, or I'm correct and you're wrong. And the church is in the midst of that conflict. Satan makes it so that the churches cannot become one and crumble down the church. And later on, that conflict brings about problems and that problem becomes a crisis. And if you do not get rid of what is not the gospel, then those things will drag us down. 
Are there people that are in the midst of hardship? You must fight the spiritual battle, or else that will drag you down. Or do you have your level standards or a basics? It's not the levels of God and the basics of God and the standards of God. If you're not, if we are not God, but I'm standard, I'm the level of myself and I'm the standards and the basics of myself, then that will all become limitations to you. If you do not change this quickly, this also will drag us down at that important moment. I'm telling you what to fight the spiritual battle on. I am telling you of the partisans of the world and what, the, what kind of partisans must be broken down. We all have backgrounds and this, through this background we are given the spiritual problem. All of the people have different backgrounds. Yes, we can have differences, but spiritual problems have, are bound to come. That is why if we do not change this quickly, that will break us down. If we fight the spiritual battle, then that could become restored and healed, or you're able to see the plans of God. But if you do not fight the spiritual battle, that will break us down and drag us down. If we do fight the spiritual battle, then the problems that we face could be healed even if it isn't healed, we are able to receive blessings. All of our problems are finished. Then what is the problem that I have? Inside of the problem that I'm faced with, there is the hidden plans of God that is inside of that problem. And when we fight the spiritual battle, we are able to see the hidden plans of God. No matter how much we say it, people do not go inside of prayer or the spiritual battle. That is why they are not receiving answers or blessings and they are living their lives. The hidden things that are inside of us. Easily put, this is the path that the Satan takes to attack us. The different situations that we have, the situations and the crisis or the conflicts, my level, basics, and standards. And going further, the spiritual, uh, spiritual problems, all of this will become a path, to, path of Satan to attack us even though we have received all of the blessings through Christ but we were not able to enjoy those blessings so the hidden partisans of the world that is inside of us I bless you in the name of the Lord that these will be crumbled down with the partisans of God. And first, so holding on to that first point, we must not fight the spiritual, uh, physical battle. Especially in Ephesians 6, 12, the Apostle Paul is telling us who to fight with. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the ruler, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So Paul knew who to fight with. It's not a battle against flesh and blood. It's not the fight or the battle of this world. It is fighting against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So 
The first point of uh, first very important point of fighting the spiritual battle is not fighting the physical battle but a spiritual battle. So we must know who to fight with. The believers that are next to you aren't the people to fight with. Your wives or uh, your wife or your husband is not the one to fight with. The evil forces of the heavenly realms are the forces that we must fight with. So, but many of the people, because they cannot see the background that these people is in, we just hate the person, but not the background. We are all deceived by the things that we see with our eyes. They're deceived by the physical things. They must see the evil forces in that background, but they cannot see that evil forces in the background. That is why they're always fighting a battle against each other. We always say that we must fight the spiritual battle. The spiritual battle that we must fight with we, it is Satan and the devil, but we have heard this, but we are always fighting the spirit of physical battle because we cannot see it. That is why later on they lose hold of all of the answers and blessings that God is trying to give us and we're living the walk of faith not receiving any answers or the blessings. This, if you see in Genesis 3.15 let us take a re uh, let's read this together and I will put a mini between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers he will crush your head and you will strike his heel we have a different enemy Adam and Eve, they, have, they were separated from God because they heard the words of the serpent. But it's not the serpent, it is Satan that was in the background. So they heard the voices of Satan and they were separated from God. That is why the battle that we must fight is against Satan. And you can see that the offspring of woman will crush your head and I will put a mini between you and 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 the offspring of yours and hers and the offspring of woman will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And you can see in 1 Peter 5.8 Sober mind your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. I said, be alert, and we must know whom we must fight with, and we must know the relations between the Satan and us. It is the enemy. Your husband is not the enemy, and your wife is not the enemy. And even to your children, you say, oh, you, you are the enemy. They are not the enemy, but the true enemy is Satan. We must be able to see the background. The, for all of us who have received the greatest blessings and answers, but why do we lose hold of this blessing and answers? Because we do not fight the spiritual battle. And we don't know who to fight with. Because you don't know who to fight with, they don't fight the spiritual battle.
And because they don't know the relationship between you and Satan, that is why you do not fight the spiritual battle. Unbelievers, they're serving Satan as, his, uh, as their father. But even for us, because we do not believe this, we are living a life enslaved to Satan. Our lifestyle is a place of battle. We all sleep when, uh, at night. But this demon, this Satan, doesn't even sleep. Whatever it takes, 24 hours, this Satan is trying to devour us and crumble us down so that we cannot hold on to the Word of God. That is why we must fight the spiritual battle so that we can receive all the blessings and enjoy the blessings that is already given to us. The, the fight that we must fight till eternity is the spiritual battle. But many other people are fighting the incorrect battle. It is the battle of the physical battle. They're just fighting over the things that is seen. The more you fight the physical battle, it is a loss to you. You will lose strength. But the spiritual battle, the more you fight the spiritual battle, will become a gain to you. You do not lose strength. You're able to restore the spiritual strength. Why can we not fight the spiritual battle? First of all, we, it's because that you don't know who the enemy is. But more easily put, it is because we do not know the fundamentals. If we are able to know the fundamentals, then we are able to fight the spiritual battle. If we really know the fundamentals, we are able to know that the battle that we must fight is a spiritual battle. And that you're able to know that Christ is with us and we're living the life that has already been won. And I heard this one person give a testimony. This one pastor, he lived and did his pastoral ministry in diligence. And he always really prayed so that how to lead his church members and the believers uh, to the Word of God. But as he reorganized the gospel, the pastoral ministries that I have done, this diligence, this effort that I put in, he was able to know that, oh, this, is a, this was incorrect. And he came to know that, oh, I did the pastoral ministry, but I was deceived by Satan. I have lost hold of the plans of God, and I was enslaved to Satan. And that's how I did pastoral ministry. And that became... That became uh, imprinted inside of his heart. And he was, because he found out what he was losing hold of. And that was because he was deceived by Satan and he started to emphasize about Satan. First, the believers, they receive uh, grace, but later on, one, two, and three, the believers started to leave the church. But he was not shaken because this was imprinted inside of his heart. He knew that he was deceived by Satan, and that's why he, all of the pastoral ministry that he did was a loss. 
But because of all of the believers were leaving, because he kept speaking about Satan, the most close person to that pastor, the pastor's wife, kept on saying, what kind of the uh, theology are you learning? And why do you keep speaking about Satan? But this pastor kept on, still kept on speaking about Satan. But later on, the believers came back to the church and these people, no matter how much problems that these people were faced with, they were at peace. They were faced with a lot of problems, but they were at peace. And evangelism took place. But that was bound to take place because the people with problems, but they're at peace, and they took that peace out to the field. That is why people had no choice but to listen to that gospel. And now the people had no choice but to gather inside of that field. They were not deceived by Satan. These people were not deceived by Satan, even though they were faced with greater problems. Because they were not deceived by Satan, they were able to have peace. And now this was relayed to the field, and the believers started to gather to that church. So do not be deceived. The Satan still today as the angel of light, he is deceiving us. So really open up your eyes correctly and know who to fight with. We must know who our opponent is and fight the spiritual battle. I bless you in the name of the Lord that you fight the spiritual battle. And secondly, we must fight the spiritual battle. The reason why we fight this physical battle, it is because we do not know how to fight the spiritual battle. Many people, when they stand in front of the spiritual battle, they're trying, they try to avoid it. And they try to uh, refuse it. That's why when a time of spiritual prob uh, spiritual battle comes, they're always in fear. No matter what kind of spiritual battle that you must fight, do not avoid it, do not evade it, fight it. Because it is the plan of God through you to save the world. God wants to save the world, not with anybody else, but you. So that is why do not avoid or evade the spiritual battle. You must absolutely fight the spiritual battle. Because through the spiritual battle, we are able to receive the blessings and answers that God is giving us. In Matthew 12, 28. But it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons. And if you see in verse 29, or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's household and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? So whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. So the first point of the spiritual battle is fight, a spiritual fight against Satan. And secondly, it is how much do we enjoy the gospel? In John 15, if you see, you can see the parable of the great vine. We are the people on, uh, we are the grape on the grape vine. And the farmer is, the, is God. So, 
우리를 구원하신 것은 열매를 맺기 위함이라고 요한복음 15장에 말씀하 The reason why God has given us salvation is so that we can bear fruits. 모든 정성을 다 쏟아 가지고 열매를 맺기 위해서 노력해 왔는데 This farmer 열매를 맺지 못했다라고 이야기하면서 결국 works hard so that this um great vine to bear fruits but because they cannot bear the correct fruit God destroyed all of the great fruit oh great vine God wanted the Israelites to bear fruit but because they could not bear the fruit that God wanted Israelites face disaster. We must bear the fruit of what God wants. How can we bear the fruit of God? How can we bear the fruit and bear of fruits that the God wants? We just have to stay with, just stay inside of the gospel. Follow after me. Just, uh, uh, just stay inside. Is I'm not saying that to just stay inside of the church. I'm telling you to uh, just stay inside of the. Word of God. So if you're just inside of the gospel, we are able to bear fruits. It is a battle of how much do we enjoy the gospel. It is that battle. But we are keep on trying hard to bear fruits. That is why we have no choice but to face the limitations. But we ourselves cannot bear fruit. When we enjoy the gospel, we're able to bear fruit. That is why other people are fighting the incorrect battle. Yes, you must work hard. You must work diligently. But because of that, you do not bear fruit. If you enjoy the gospel, inside of that, you're able to bear fruit. And that is the spiritual battle. And First is a spiritual battle against Satan, and second is how much we enjoy the gospel, and third it is, is it the plan of God or not? Many people, when they are faced with problems, they don't find the plans of God, but they just, with their thoughts, they just take a look at that pr problem. But when a problem or situation comes to you, Find the plan of God. When you ins go inside of the Word and just pray and wait a little bit, God will answer you. When we face a problem without asking the plan of God, we just go in full fledged inside of that problem. We must find the plans of God. If we're inside of the absolute sovereignty of God, inside of that, we're able to see the plan of God. If you're inside of the absolute sovereignty of God, inside of the problem that you're faced with, the plan of God will come out. And that is where we stake our lives in. God is giving us the strength so we can challenge against everything. If it is not the plan of God, we, are able, we must be able to give up. Even though if it is a loss to us and not a gain to us, we are able to give up on that. First spiritual battle is the fight against Satan and how much we enjoy the gospel. And third is Inside of the problem, we are able. We must find the answers or, or the plans of God. And fourth, lastly, is we have received grace. Uh, we have received salvation through grace.
But many of the people keep on thinking that they have received salvation with their own efforts and their own actions. In Genesis 2, 17, but you must not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That was just an action. And Adam relayed this a covenant of actions to Eve. That is why they have failure. That is why Jesus Christ has come to us and given us grace and has given us salvation. He has crushed the head of Satan. He has solved all of our sins and has opened up the way to meet God. And when we, receive, when we accept that Jesus Christ inside of our hearts who has finished all of our problems and the answers that has been given to Christ is given to us. What does it mean by that Christ is the solution to all of the problems? He has crushed the head of Satan and he has solved all of our sin and has opened up the way to meet God. He has solved all of the problems in Genesis 3. That is why we say that he is the solution to all problems. God will lead us through the grace. We cannot solve sin, the problem of sin with our actions. We cannot win over the world with our actions. That is why God has given us Christ so that we can win over and have victory over Satan and the world. So we just have to use the authority of Christ. So in Genesis 3.15 today, the offspring of woman will crush your head. God has already promised us the authority to crush the head of Satan. If you see Matthew 10.1, as Jesus sent off the disciples, what did he say? He said, you will have the authority to drive out impure spirits. And even in the book of Mark, chapter 6, 16, 17, and these signs, and Luke 10, 19, and I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all of the power of enemy. Nothing will harm you. Using this authority inside of the field, I bless you in the name of the Lord that you will have the blessing of where you have no choice but to have victory in the spiritual battle. So the true battle is a spiritual battle, not a, the physical battle. Satan tries to make us fight the physical battle so that he can bring us down. So don't fall into unbelief listening to the words of people and listening to the words of Satan and being deceived by that. Know that know who to fight with and always fight the spiritual battle and know that in the background there's Satan. And this one person um, came to counsel with me He's, uh, this person is receiving so many uh, misunderstandings from other people because of his actions. This person didn't say anything. It's not even true what the other people say, but because of this, all of this misunderstanding, this person said that uh, I don't know what to do and he uh, this person wanted to uh, say that it isn't him but I told this person 
God is alive, and Satan is also alive. Yes, you can give excuses and say that this is incorrect or that is uh, just a misunderstanding. But with your strength, we cannot be free from this problem. Only God is the one who could break you free from this. So don't make excuses. If you're misunderstood, then just find the, a plan of God and renew yourself and just entrust everything to God. God must solve it to have true solution. Yes, you can have misunderstandings. But that is the plan of God. So, inside of the problem, let's see what, the God, what God will do. And this person said, I will do that. But a few days later, this person came to me and said, thank you. Because this person was able to pray for the person that was making this uh, false rumors. If you try to solve the problem with your own strength, it will not be solved. Only the Lord can solve all of our problems. So entrust everything to Christ. And that is fighting the spiritual battle. In this year, the Lord told us that he, will, he is the one that will work. Even if we say amen, it will not work. But God has given us the greatest weapon to win over Satan, and that is 1, 3, and 8. It's Christ Kingdom of God and only Holy Spirit. The greatest weapon, the strongest weapon to win over and have victory over Satan, it is 1, 3, and 8. Christ, Kingdom of God, and only Holy Spirit. And when we believe this, in Matthew 16, 18, the gates of Hades will not overcome you. And this was the blessing that was given to Peter who confess Christ. And to the people who confess that Jesus is the Christ, the gates of Hades will not overcome in Matthew 16. And the Satan will kneel down before you. Satan cannot have victory over you. Who can have victory over the people who have Christ and the kingdom of God in Acts 1.3? Uh, the kingdom of darkness breaks down and the kingdom of God is established inside of us. In Matthew 12, 28, but if the, by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. So the, the kingdom of God has already come upon us. When the kingdom of God is established inside of us, then the forces of darkness have no choice but to flee. Inside of our family, our occupation, our workplaces, if the kingdom of God is established there, then the forces of demons have no choice but to flee. And you are able to have the blessing of meeting. So it's Acts 1.8. Only Holy Spirit. When we are filled by the Holy Spirit, we are able to receive power. And with that power, we become the evidence, or we become, become the witnesses to the ends of the earth. So if there is the greatest weapon to win over Satan, it is Christ, Kingdom of God, and only Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you one step further. Christ is the kingdom of God, and kingdom of God is the blessing of the throne. And when you're filled by the Holy Spirit, 
you're able to save your past, present, and future. And we have a praise regarding this. It's 1, 3, and 8. 1, 3, and 8 is connected with 3, 9, 3. So don't fight an incorrect battle. Fight the spiritual battle that is correct. And I bless you in the name of the Lord that you will have victory inside of the field.